44,999. Well, it's the cost of the going to be released MI Notebook 14 laptop. And there's also another series of MI 14 uh, Notebook Horizon laptop series that has just been announced by the Xiaomi company, which are going to be released on June 17. So the question that I had in my mind was, is it going to be a good replacement for my already available Mac uh, Book Air? So I've been thinking about having a replacement for my Mac. And as people have been calling the Xiaomi's MI series is the uh, poor man's MacBook. So that's what we're going to be finding out. I don't have the device or the, I don't have the machine in my hand right now, but we're going to be doing a virtual review of what are the specifications that are available for this uh, this laptop and finding out if it fits my programming as well as my video editing portfolio that's what we're going to be finding out in this video let's get this video straight away started all right so first things first i want to make one thing very clear i'm not a, actually a very good reviewer i'm not a professional reviewer as well but this video i've not watched any of the uh, released reviews about the uh, mi notebook 14 and mi notebook 14 horizon I'm going to be talking about in the perspective of what are the specifications there, what is the things that I look for when I'm buying a new laptop, is it going to be useful for programming because that's my uh, USP and also is it going to be useful for my video editing and other stuff that I do. I for sure know that this is not going to be fit for gaming. So if you're going to be watching this video considering that you want to buy it for gaming purpose, I would say don't go forward. Now, for others who are looking for a programming as well as a video editing laptop, we got a lot of things to play with in our hand. So first things first, I went directly into the uh, MI's official website, checked into the both of these laptops, the MI 14, uh, MI Notebook 14 Horizon as well as the MI Notebook 14. And the price difference is mainly because of the change in the processor that's been given in these both variants. Other than that, they look almost identical to me. I'm right now interested in looking for the MI 14 Notebook Horizon series. So I'm going to be talking about that in detail. The first thing you're going to be looking at is the display that I want to talk about. The first thing, as soon as you look in for the specification as you scroll down, is that it is very clearly mentioned it's a 14 inch uh, laptop. Now, as you can see behind me, this is actually a MacBook Air, which is actually a 13 inch laptop, but the screen size here still is actually 14 inch. The difference between that one inch is because of the top where we have a camera, the placement for the camera and the screen itself is a 13 inch screen. The same specification, the same dimension has been used for no, uh, the uh, my laptop series as well, but without the camera. So when you take away the camera, you get a near bezel display and that's what we've been, uh, they've achieved through this uh, laptop series. So I'm actually very impressed with that. But one more thing that, that caught my eye was the 10 ITP display, which I think is not going to be useful for me. If you're looking at it for a programming perspective, I often find that my IDs like PyCharm and even my Sublime are very, very sometimes throwing up all these crazy uh, plug-in displays and error displays on the top, top bottom corner, which is very small. Now, let me consider the same is going to be done through this laptop as well. And I find that 1080p is not going to be suitable for my programming itself. Now consider the same for video editing. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be useful for 1080p video. I'm not going to be spending that much money. But other than the display perspective, the 14 inch is going to be giving me a wider thing to cover, wider display to cover as well. And also it's going to be useful uh, considering that there is no camera. Now the company has told that they'll be giving a camera as a bundle accessory to the uh, 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 the laptop itself. So I don't think it's a big negative for me. That's it for the display as well. The display I'm comparing it to at the existing MacBook Air. And for the programming perspective, it's going to be useful obviously, but not as useful as I wanted it to be. Video editing, I'm going to give it a no because for the one, one reason being it 1080p. They should have touched it with the 2560 across 1440 uh, resolution because that's what the macbook is using right now and even if they didn't they should have actually bumped up the resolution just to fit their 14 inch now 14 inch with the 1080p is not going to be um, that crisp in terms of videos and i'm actually looking for more of that all right first things first i'm not a performance or i'm not a performance nerd when it comes to laptop configurations and such so i might not be providing you guys the most technical review in this video but from my my perspective i have used a lot of laptops over my seven years of programming and i know what is going to fit for programming and what is going to fit for my gaming what is going to fit for my video editing so as far as i know this laptop comes with a 512 ssd which is nvme ssd which is the latest configuration that's been released in a lot of new laptops and also at the same time comes with the 8 GB fixed RAM. So it's similar to how the MacBook has. You cannot extend your RAM storage or you cannot extend your storage as well. So it's going to be fixed 512 and 8 GB RAM coming with the device itself. 
when it comes to programming as such you guys have seen me go crazy at programming so i would spend close to 8 10 9 10 hours on the laptop continuously open and i still think the performance wise the i7 processor is going to handle that kind of work it could i mean should probably in theory handle the uh, uh, ever consuming docker instances and the server instances that we can spawn on our laptop that is not a problem i'm very confident on that part but coming on to the video editing portion of the laptop with this performance on the i7 tension and the 8 gb uh, ram the graphic card provided is very small it's, it's going to be a 2 gb graphic card that is going to be helping us in doing i would say up to a moderate video editing level and not more than that that's kind of worrying me right now because let's say that i'm looking for a complex video editing that i want to render usually what happens is that when all the videos that i make right now are going to be handled in adobe premiere pro or it could even be the adobe photoshop that i'm using and all of these do take a lot of uh, the graphic memory which i'm still not convinced this is going to handle the laptop itself comes with the windows 10 pre-install which i'm actually very <coughs> not very big fan of but still I, the windows 10 is going to be making it so much easier for us considering that i'm not looking for a switch between a mac to windows but at the same time i actually have a much better experience with windows so that, that's it for the performance wise and also the os that is going to be coming preloaded i would probably look to have it uh, double booted with the ubuntu also in the laptop not i'm not really sure if i'm going to buy it but uh, with respect to the programming and video editing that's where it stands in terms of performance all right now on the top of uh, performance and we've been discussing about performance the one thing that you have to note is that the win the 8 gb ram that comes preloaded is not expandable it cannot extend it or it cannot do anything with that that's how the all the mac devices are at this point of time and they're trying to be as close to that as possible so you do not have it extended from an 8 gb to 16 gb or anything of that sort so you actually have to stay with the already existing uh, configurations if you want to uh, make sure that you are looking for an upgrade you have to only trade your laptop that's going to be a bit of a problem if you're considering if you're looking like me to uh, keep on playing and juggling with the ram sizes now and then also with the performance itself it's coming in preloaded with couple of uh, the xiaomi's mi products loaded meaning that if, if, if you have an mi watch or if you have your mi phone you can do uh, uh, you, without any kind of uh, preloaded drivers you can transfer data between these mi devices just like how you do it for mac so yeah that's what i'm talking about it's very very close to mac but at the same time it's all running on windows that's about it for performance. The next thing that I'm looking forward to when I'm buying a laptop is the use of keyboard and the trackpad that is available on the laptop itself. Now, as you can see from the images I'm putting right now, the laptop is very much similar. The keyboard looks exactly identical to what you find on Mac. Now, that's true because they are actually using the same keyboard. This is a cut keyboard which the Mac uses on the laptop. But one thing that I did notice was the trackpad was looking very, very small in pictures. Now, I wasn't really convinced. So what I did was I took a picture of this picture and I compared the dimensions with the screen sizes and the available existing size that the Xiaomi itself gave. So that gave, I, I got a better conclusion for the fact that the trackpad is definitely small. The Mac trackpad is much bigger compared to the Xiaomi's MI trackpad. So it's going to be a bit of a juggle starting, starting months when I'm looking for all these keys that I'm used to with Mac it's going to take some time to get the control sorted so this shorter trackpad shouldn't in theory be a problem but there are a lot of different scenarios where you could be uh, you you could have had had a better trackpad or a bigger trackpad for a lot of different purposes but other than that i'm really convinced that the keyboard is going to be buttery smooth and also the the performance on the laptop itself is going to be welcomed now on the topic of keyboard the one important thing that i did notice was that the keyboard does not have any form of backlight support so that means that you cannot use it when you are in a dark place and that is going to be a problem if you are um, you know programming for a very long time so that's it that's those are the things that i do look forward to when i'm looking for a laptop and these are things that i did look up to all right coming to the last se section where we're going to be discussing the accessories your your uh, uh, different set of supports that is being given for the laptop and my final verdict the first thing the accessory that you get obviously is the webcam that is going to be coming uh, the mi webcam that is going to be coming preloaded with your laptop bundle the laptop itself comes pre-configured with uh, three different ports the type c type a as well as an hdmi port which i'm very very looking forward to the primary reason being that the hdmi port i always use an external monitor and I, i'm on my laptop the primary reason being that i cherish a bigger monitor i can have much more control 
control over that. So the, the point that the HDMI port is coming inbuilt inside the laptop is going to make it so much easier. Also as the steel, the, the build wise, the laptop itself has an aluminium frame, very much similar to how the MacBook works. So that means that the, the look and finish is also going to be much more easier for me to adapt to for anybody who's looking forward to switch from MacBook. So that, those are the things that you look forward to in a laptop when I'm looking forward to programming specifically. If you ask me my final, final word with respect to programming, it's that it's going to be so much easier. And it's also a Windows alternative, so I'm going to be okay with that. That doesn't mean that I'm going to be using uh, the Windows only. I still would prefer a Mac or a Windows any day, any time. But Windows, having a Windows alternative is also always going to be helpful. So yeah, one laptop with a MacBook, which is still going to be an obsolete in another year's time. I'm okay with that. I would look for Windows an alternative and I'm going to be using that for programming purposes. So those are the things that I would talk about for programming. Yes, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. But when it comes to video editing, I'm not very convinced because of the fact that I do run a lot of complex and even complex rendering when it comes to editing my videos I that is going to be making it super difficult for me if it does not work so that's that's the only problem that I have in theory it should work it's very close to what is recommended so that should mean that it should work but I'm not really convinced that it's going to be making any form of complex video editing possible uh, with this laptop this is actually considered a budget intro laptop for the uh, poor man's MacBook I would call it that way but the windows alternative is definitely going to take a name um will i buy it i will definitely make a video on that when i'm going to be buying it if i'm going to be buying it i still am not sure until the release on june 17 i would recommend you guys to keep it keep yourself on track of what's happening in the laptop world and everything of that sort so that's it for this video i hope i did not make any mistakes because i, I don't have that much uh, experience or knowledge with respect to specifications I don't look forward to a lot of specifications if you ask me I do know what is what and how things work but I'm not really a specification nerd so I, I'm really not going to be getting in depth into the details of that so that's it pretty much for the virtual uh, I would say a review of the upcoming MI notebook 14 horizon as well as the notebook 14 series if you're going to be buying that, let me know what you guys think as well in the comment section below. Is it going to be your choice of your first programming laptop? Is it not going to be your choice? I would definitely love to hear more about that in the comment section. Also, give a thumbs up, thumbs up for this video. Subscribe to the channel. Keep you all posted with upcoming programming as well as tech content in this channel right away. Let me meet you in the next video. Until then, Bharat. Peace out. Have a super awesome day.